Richardson. My name is Amanda Little. I'm a social worker here at the hospital. Do you care if I sit and talk with you for a few minutes about your discharge plan? Sure. Well, how are you feeling? I'm all right. I didn't sleep too well last night. Well, you were in a hospital. and never sleep well in a hospital. <laughs> Figured you're right about that one. <laughs> well, tell me, tell me what brought you to the hospital. I had blood clots in my legs. Oh, no. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Is that the first time that this has happened? No, I was in here last year, last July, in the emergency room. Okay, and where did you go after your discharge last year? Uh, I went and stayed at my girlfriend's place for about three weeks. Um, so, what did we help you for last time you were in the hospital? Uh, I don't, nothing much, really. I, I went home and... I had that uh, something for your medicine. So I got a, what's it called? Um, well Vista? Yeah, I had Well Vista, but then it, it just it, it just ran out like three weeks ago. Okay, well we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but actually it says right here um, that you're actually self-pay in our system, so I was going to come and talk to you a little bit more about that. And um, just wanted to make sure that I was accurate that you have no insurance. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not working right now. Okay, well, do you have a primary care doctor? No, I don't. Maybe I don't think I've seen a doctor in over 20 years. Oh, my goodness. Well, are you taking any medications currently? No, ma'am, I'm not taking any medications. I was taking some from last year, but, well, that's the, I don't get it anymore and I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how are we going to get your meds when we, leave, when we leave for the hospital this time? Um, you're going to need a medication called Plavix um, so that your arteries don't get clogged up. So what, what can we do about that this time? Well, I guess I'll just have to find $20 and, and sign back up for Well Vista. I, I mean, I know what i got to do for that. Okay. Well, I'll let Sandra know that you're interested in getting back into the program. Um, and she'll come talk to you and let you know about everything that you might need. Um, is that okay with you if I refer you to her? Yeah, I remember talking to her last time I was here. Well, tell me a little bit about your home life. Um, are you still living with your girlfriend? No, I actually live about five blocks down the road from here. And uh, my mom's house is over there. And I, I just kind of go back and forth between my mom's and my, my girlfriend's place. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you've been bouncing around quite a bit. Um, I guess I do go back and forth. Uh, a little bit because my mom gets tired of, of me and she, she kind of gets fed up with me and I go to my girlfriend's house and my girlfriend gets frustrated and fed up with me and you know I go back to my mom's house and then I got my sister got real you know on my back for a while just about living in my mom's and she thinks I'm, I'm using my mom for a lot so she gets fed up with me too so so from what I hear you telling me your your mom and your girlfriend, you feel like they get fed up with you? I don't know. I, that's just the way that they, they get all frustrated with me and try to tell me what to do. I just feel like they get fed up with, with it when I don't do what they want me to. What kind of support will you have when you're discharged? See, that's the thing. I, my, my girlfriend said I can't come back to her place, but my mom, I guess I'll just have to call my mom and she'll have to come pick me up and and I'll just go back to her place. I don't have any other choice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and I guess I, more so I just want to get back to where I'm at my own place. But for right now, I mean, I don't have any other, other way to get back on my feet. And, and what does getting back on your feet, what does that mean to you? I mean, I want to get my own place, and I want to get my own car, and I, I want to make some money. I've got this landscaping business I'm trying to start up, and I'm you know, doing a little stuff here and there. I just really like to be back into, you know, independent and sure. doing my thing. Um, and how do you get around without, without a car? Well, usually my mom takes me where I need to go if I've got to go, you know, running errands, but I walk a lot, you know, around the community. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Mr. Richardson, can you tell me a little bit about your educational background? Oh, I, uh, I made it through 10th grade. Um, 
I don't know, I didn't really see the point of going to school anymore. I got into a lot of fights and my grades weren't going so well and I just didn't see the point in school. So 10th grade's it. So you felt like um, school was just, just pointless and did you, um, what really was it that you didn't like about school? I don't know, teachers, teachers are always on my back and bothering me about my grades and uh, like I said, I got into fights a lot and uh, I just didn't want to be at school anymore. I didn't feel like I needed to be at school anymore. I felt like I could do a lot more outside of school. Okay. Well, um, what do you have any religious preferences at all? Um, I was raised Southern Baptist. Um, my grandma always took, her, took us to church and made sure we knew the Bible and, and you know, that we were, we were doing our, our Bible studies and things like that. And she was a real spiritual woman. So she influenced it a lot. And do you feel that you're a spiritual person now that you're an adult? I, I would say I, I believe in God and all, but, you know, I'm not, I don't go to church much anymore after she passed away. Mm -hmm. And she, she passed away? Yeah, she Recently? Was, she was, uh... It wasn't recent, it was a, you know, about 23, 24. She passed away, but I just, ever since then, I couldn't step foot back into a church. Hmm. It sounds like that's been something that's been really, really difficult for you. Were you very close to your grandmother? Yeah, we, uh, she was around when my mama wasn't. Um, and she, she was pretty much, she would, she's the one who raised me. Um, I didn't have a father, so, uh, Pretty much my grandmama took care of us when my mom was at work. Okay, and um, what have your relationships been like now? You, 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 you've spoken a lot about your girlfriend. Um, has that been a long relationship, or what? what's your relationship like with your girlfriend? Well, you know, I, women are always trying to tell me what to do in my life. I feel like they always want me to be something that they want me to be and not what I want to do. And, and they, you know, we fight sometimes. Um, over, over stuff that she doesn't want me to drink, she doesn't want me to, to do any kind of smoking, she doesn't like the lifestyle I've got, I know, but we just fight over that most of the time. I'm just tired of people telling me what to do. Well, that's understandable. Everybody wants to have their their independence, but what, what do you think that she does want? What do you think your girlfriend wants for your life? I mean, she she says I drink too much, and she says that I, I when I... She doesn't like it when I smoke, and she, you know, she knows exactly what bush, buttons to push to make me angry and frustrated. And I'm a grown man; I don't need a woman telling me what I need to do. And you know, I know what I need to do to get, to get better and be, you know, be on my own. Mm -hmm. I just don't need a woman pushing me. Sure. Well, I, I'm sure she's just trying to keep you out of the hospital, <laughs> for right. sure. Mr. Richardson, um, tell me a little bit more about your work history. Well, I used to work in construction, and I used to do a couple other smaller jobs here and there. I used to work at Goodwill, but got let go two years ago because of my criminal history. Your criminal history? Yeah, I was, uh, I was incarcerated for ten and a half years. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Um, I just, I'm, I'm just not proud of the things that I've, I've done, and, you know, I've I'm not talk about the you know, specifics about it. I just leave it at I was incarcerated for two years. Okay. Well, you're, you, seem, you seem a little anxious and um, just, you know, I just want you to be able to feel comfortable around me. Um, I mean, I do. I just, I just know what I need to do. I know it's not, not the stuff I want to be into anymore, and I'm just not proud of it. Okay. Well, would you feel comfortable talking about any of those, any of those things? Well, um, I used to drink and, and do drugs, okay. um, but I you know, got caught with some, some minor possession and, and things like that before in the past, and uh, just, I'm just done with all that now. Just done. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for, for opening up to me. And um, when, when do you think the last time that you used would have been? Well, today is Thursday. I was admitted to the hospital yesterday. So, Tuesday. Alright. And what kind of drugs do you typically use? 
sometimes, uh, usually smoke marijuana, and uh, I do crack sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm done. Okay. All right, and, and, and why are you done? I just, I, I know I, I know I gotta get, I know I gotta get out of that, I know I gotta, you know, make better decisions, and, you know, the second time being in the hospital, I just, I know what I need to do. Great, well, it sounds like you have a really, um, positive outlook on your future, and that's definitely a, a strength that you have, you know, to focus on the future and to know what you need to do um, to change your life and to make yourself healthier. So that's 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 something you should be very very proud of yourself for. Uh, I never really thought of it that way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're taking the first step um, to you know realizing that, that that's something that you need to to quit doing to to make your life healthier and happier and safer. Um, so since since you're not currently em employed, though, um, how were you previously getting your drugs? Well, my mom supports me financially, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, which I wish she wouldn't, or wish she didn't have to. But it'd either be her giving me money, or it'd be you know going on the streets and just people. You meet people on the street, and they just invite you in, and you just you do drugs together. And what does that what does that feel like having to get money from? From your mom and um, just in counting on friends for for money and feeling like it's something that you need to do. Now I wish I didn't. Have, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish that you know, like I said, I can't can't really get a job because of my criminal history. Nobody will hire me, and it really is it's frustrating. I just say say that it's frustrating. Right. Well, um, I hope that we can kind of come up with some some tools to. Help you out with that. Tell me a little bit about about most of your your friends or the people that you smoke with. Um, most of them I've known for years, and they're they're good friends, and you know, I've just we just been doing doing drugs together for a long time now, and uh, and sometimes you just like I said, you just meet people on the street, and in my community, that's just kind of how how it's done. We just every, you know, most of everybody's doing doing drugs. <laughs> Well, do most of your friends smoke pot? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Do you have any friends outside of that circle? Um, not, not really anymore. Um, not after you know things just kind of after I got out of jail. It's just kind of the crowd I ran with. Yeah. Well, from what I hear you saying, you know, you got, I mean, you feel very frustrated, and it's, it's, you kind of feel like you're at a dead end because of your past. And decisions you made in the past, and it's kind of just leading you down the same, the same road. And I know that's very frustrating. Would you say that's kind of what you're feeling right now? Yeah, I would say that I would like to get out of it. I would like to to make a change in my life. But I mean, I am feeling like I can't really do anything. I can't. I mean, background checks. I can't pass one. So it's frustrating, and nobody wants you know. You know, my landscaping business is what I want to do, but it, it's just, it's hard to get that started, and, and I'm just, I'm at a loss. Okay, well, tell me a little bit more. You said a landscaping business? Yeah, I go around the, the community, and, you know, sometimes it's how people will give me my drugs if, I'm, if I do their, their, land, their landscaping for them, or, you know, sometimes we work out a deal, and, and I get a little bit of money here and there, and it's just not, you know, I'll ask people, I'll go around and, Talk to people in the community and, and neighborhood, and, and just kind of go door to door almost, and it's just not going anywhere. Though. It sounds like the work is even going back to drug usage, or kind of a a barter for even with your friends. Is that what you were saying that you work for drug money or for drugs? I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, I'm not proud of that either. But sometimes it's it's just what they've got, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, when you do that, do you often take it back to your mom's house? Does your mom do drugs, or? Oh, no, nah, mama doesn't do drugs. And oh. I, I don't do drugs around my mom's house. Okay, all right. So, generally speaking, is it's with those friends or at their house? Yeah. All right. And um, 
Does she know about your drug usage at all? She knows, I mean, yeah, she knows. She gets, she gets real fed up. She gets real frustrated. Um, she doesn't like it, of course, but, you know, she's, she's the one I can go to, though, and she won't, she won't pick me out on the street or anything. I know she'll, she'll always have a, have a place for me, but she doesn't like it, no. Well, what would be, what would um, you be faced with if you were um, caught with, with drugs again? Uh, well, I went to jail for you know, 10 years, this was my second offense, and so if I got another offense, it'd be another, you know, between 10, 20 years jail time. Wow. Well, and you've already done that mm -hmm. in your life. I don't want to do it again. And that's, that's great for you to have realized. So tell me how you feel if you were to face drug charges again. I, just, I mean, I just don't want to go back to jail for doing something stupid that I can help and waste 10 years of my life again. That's obviously had a really big impact on you. Um, so what do you feel like you, you've got to do then? Well, I've got to, got to get clean. I've got to quit doing drugs. I've got to quit hanging out with those people that do drugs. You know, I've got to start getting, getting around people that are going to do good things in my life. I've got to find my own place. I've got to get my own money. So I'm dependent on my mom for everything. And, you know, try to work on that relationship and, and do things do things for myself and make sure I'm independent. Wow, it sounds like you really know what you want. Yeah, I think I do. That's that's wonderful. Mr. Richardson, I have some resources that I think would be really useful for you um, in helping you with any substance abuse problems that you may have. Um, so what kind of, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm actually talking about a program called Loretac, um, and it stands for Lexington, Richland, Lexington and Richland Alcohol and Drug Abuse. Um, this is an agency that provides services for those who have been using and abusing substances. Um, do you think that that's something that you might be interested in looking at? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got to try something. I, I mean, I, I know I can quit if I wanted to, but I know I'm going to need some help to do it. Absolutely. Well, I'd be more than happy to, to help you get started in that process. Um, I can make an appointment for you if, you, if you'd be interested. Yeah, uh, go ahead and do that for me, uh, and that'll, that'll be helpful. Well, I'd love to get you set up with a primary care physician as well. How is that going to work out? Well, actually, here at Happy Days Hospital, we have um, what's called the Partners of Wellness Program, where you don't have to be insured, um, and you can actually get a primary care physician. How's so, that sound? Well, yeah, but how much would I have to pay for a visit? It's actually on a sliding scale, and it's five to fifteen dollars per visit. Per visit, do you think that that's something you might be able to handle? I, yeah, I mean, it's better than what a normal doctor visit is going to be. Yeah, and this way we can kind of get you on a better schedule and um, make sure that you know before you're you end up in the hospital that you're taking care of yourself all along and and don't have to come to the emergency room and can go to, to the uh, to the doctor. All right, well. Yeah, definitely. Set me up with, with that doctor and, and that'll, that sounds good to me. That sounds great. Okay, well, I'll get the foreigners actually to set up an appointment for you. Okay. Okay, great. Well, now that we've kind of talked a little bit, um, I'd like to create a treatment plan with you, if that's all right. Okay. And a treatment plan is actually made up of, of goals that we would like for you to accomplish and goals that you would like to accomplish um, in, in making your life and making your life healthier and better. How does that sound? Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Richardson, what do you feel is your most important goal at this point? Well, I, I mean, I'm in the hospital, so I'd like to, to do something about my health first, I guess. And, you know, I, I would like to get well vested back and get my medications back in order. And Absolutely. If I can, you know, since I can't afford them, then that's the way I'd like to do it. So I think that's first. Okay. So, um, getting re-enrolled in Well Vista? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's write that down. All right. And we're actually going to need to get um, two pay stubs from you. Is that something that maybe your mom could bring for us? Yeah, I think she can. I think I know where they are. When, does, when do we need those by? Um, as soon as she can bring them in would be great. Okay. 
All right, I can I can give I can give her a call after this and see if she can bring those up. Okay. Here, I guess, yeah. Okay. Do you think that um, she'll be able to cover the twenty dollar fee as well? Yeah, I think so. If she's if she knows what's going for, then yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And then we'll actually um we'll we'll get a three day supply of prescriptions for you um on the day of discharge so that she'll be set up before um you're all set up with uh well this okay okay all right so we're gonna make that your first goal what else do you think do you feel is, is important to you we talked a little bit about your substance um abuse problems um is that something that that's important yeah i would say that that's definitely the next step because I know to, to get my life back on track, I've got to, you know, get rid of what got me in this rut in the first place. Okay. You know, I'd like some help in that. I think that, you know, what you talked about with setting me up with a treatment center would be the second, the second most important thing. Okay. So, let's see. We'll say substance abuse treatment and recovery. Okay. Now, that's a big goal, and we know that it's not going to happen necessarily overnight. But we can create several objectives uh, to help get you to that goal. Okay. okay. How about first of all, um, like we talked about, we'll set up an appointment with Lorraine Back, um, and we'll go ahead and do that. I'll set up that appointment, and we'll try and set that up. How about November sixteenth? That gives you a chance to get home and settled, and then you can okay. hopefully we'll have something by then. All right. Okay. And then also, um, do you think that you'll be able to? have transportation there or would you like for me to arrange some transportation as well? Uh, no, I think my mom can, can take me. Okay. I think that would be fun. All right, wonderful. And then of course, you know, each step from here, um, you'll need to you'll need to take the first step, which is going to be initial um, initial appointment, which is probably the most important step, just getting there the first time. So let's make that an objective to to attend your first appointment. Um, and then to follow the treatment plan that Lorraine Dack excuse me, provides for you. Okay. Do you think that those are objectives that you can handle? Yeah, I think that's, that seems pretty simple enough. Okay. And hopefully that'll get you going on the the right way to uh, to recovery. Yeah, I really like that. Wonderful. Okay. Well, how about do you have any other are there any other goals that you have left over? Well, I can. I mean. We talked about the the doctor visits, and if I can get in with that doctor that you've been talking about, then I would, yeah, I'd like to do that too and, and set that up. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we'll get you set up with that program. It's the Partners with Wellness program, again, and um, I'll have the floor nurse set you up with an appointment um, so that you can, you can go ahead and, and see your doctor. Um, and then if you'll just, again, arrange for transportation okay. to get there. And I'll leave you the address. It's actually located on Laurel Street. And um, then you'll just set up continuously follow-up follow appointments from there. Um, and then I'm sure that they'll want you to come in for annual checkups. Okay. Okay. Sounds easy enough. Okay. Well, is there, are there any questions or anything that you have about any of these goals or objectives that we've listed? No, I think you, think you pretty much settled some of my concerns that I have that I didn't even know about. Okay. Do you feel comfortable with everything we've discussed? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm going in the right direction. And, Great. You know, I didn't really know where to go at first, but I think that now I've got an idea of what I need to do and and how to get it done. So. Great. Well, Mr. Richardson, thank you so much for for your time today and for confiding in me. And I know it's not always easy to talk about some of the things that we've discussed, but I'm really proud of you for for taking this step in the right direction to making yourself healthier and to, to living a, a better life. Um, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and get started, talk to the floor nurse, and we'll get some of your appointments set up, and, and I will follow up with you soon. Thank How's you. Yeah, Thank you so much, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. So nice to meet you. You too. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. Good luck. New York. Red leather and yellow leather. <laughs> Red leather and yellow leather. Huh? Oh, I've been recording for the last three minutes. Mr. Richardson, tell me more 
more about your work history. Or no, no, no. <clears throat> Happy days. <laughs> what do we call it? Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. 